Greetings. This is the one you've known as Jesus the Christ. Everyone and everything is unfolding. Every person, like a flower or other plant or an animal, unfolds according to his or her plan. That plan, whether it is a plant, an animal, or a human being, is in its DNA. Unfolding and growing and learning as a result of that growth is part of life for every living thing. Plants and animals can't help but learn, and either can you. Like plants and animals, you are programmed to have certain experiences for your growth and evolution, and those experiences cannot be avoided. Plants are destined to flower or bear seeds and die, and so you too have a destiny. Certain experiences are in the design for you. However, unlike animals and plants, you have free will and you can oppose this design. And when you do that, you suffer. It feels terrible to oppose what is natural and part of one's design, and that is the right experience. Otherwise, growth and evolution wouldn't happen according to plan, and plans are important. This universe and others are designed by the great designer. They are not haphazard or purposeless. Every creation has its own purpose within the whole, and therefore has a specific design. You are designed to fulfill a purpose within creation. When you are fulfilling that design, you're said to be in the flow, and when you are not, you're said to be not in the flow. Being in the flow is a happy, loving, and peaceful experience, while the opposite is true for not being in the flow. And, as I said, that is how it's meant to be. The discomfort of being out of the flow is meant to bring you back into the flow. This discomfort is not a punishment, but a signal, a warning that you're out of the flow. Without such a corrective mechanism, the whole would not function properly. You are like the cells in a body. Each cell must perform the function for which it was designed, or the body won't function properly. This is not only a good metaphor. This is a reality. You are cells within the body of God. And just as in the body there are healthy, well-functioning cells, and possibly unhealthy, poorly functioning or non-functioning cells, there are people who are functioning well and fulfilling their design, and others who are not, and everything in between. And these unhealthy cells or people are a problem for the whole. Every cell and every person has an impact on the whole. No cell or person stands alone or apart from the whole, and every cell or person matters to the whole. And so it is with you. Every one of you matters to the whole and to God. While you are given free will, your will affects not only you, but everyone else. Disease cells, for instance, affect the cells around it which must compensate for the diseased cell's errant ways or try to correct its negative effects on the body. What you do matters. And what you do begins with what you think. What you think determines what you do. So what you think, and particularly what you believe, matters to all of creation. Creation will either benefit or not from that, You can be a boon to the whole or a drag upon it, but that is allowed. You are allowed to make damaging choices, even ones that impair the whole, for when you damage yourself or another, you do damage the whole. You think of your free will as yours and therefore as something that affects mostly you, But your free will affects everyone and everything in the universe. 
This is a daunting reality to be this powerful. And yet you are this powerful, perhaps without you being aware of your power. So I am explaining this to you now so that you know for sure that you are powerful and you are important. You may be asking, how can my small day-to-day choices matter to the whole? Many of them don't seem to affect anyone but myself. What you're not seeing here is that you are all connected on deeper levels than just the physical. So while some choice you make may not ostensibly affect anyone else, it still does. And this is how it does. Every thought you have that you believe becomes part of humanity's collective consciousness and unconsciousness. And this does affect every human being. You are connected to everyone, even to those you've never met. You are connected on levels that you're unaware of. If a certain thought, for instance, is prominent in humanity, in the egoic minds of humanity, then it has gotten there through repetition and agreement. Your egoic minds are very similar from one human being to another. This is not only because you share culture and an ego, but also because you share history going back millennia, and you share minds. At your core and at the level of mind, you are one. Your minds are literally connected to each other. You share with everyone both the negativity of the egoic mind and the wisdom and brilliance of your true self. You are not so different from each other. You think the same thoughts have the same feelings, and have the same potential to be divine. There is really only one mind and one being, expressing as humanity in so many different forms. This truth has important ramifications for humanity. The more you heal your own mind, the more healed humanity's mind becomes and the easier it will be for other people to heal and become more free. What you think and believe matters to all of humanity. Change your own mind for the better, and the one mind you share as humanity is changed. You can heal and free humanity without even leaving the house, just by healing your own mind and freeing yourself from the lies that humanity has bought into for millennia. This is encouraging, is it not, for all of you who wonder if the emotional and spiritual work you are doing has any practical effect in the world. It has. The work you do on yourself to heal and raise your consciousness matters not only to you, but to every other human being. Emotional healing and spiritual work are that valuable. When you heal yourself, you heal humanity. When you raise your consciousness, you raise humanity's consciousness. It may be hard to see the fruits of this work, and you will never be fully aware of them, for you are not privy to the subtleties of such mysteries and it may take a while before you experience those fruits. But they are there more than you know. They matter more than you know. And it doesn't matter if you're doing this emotional and spiritual work only to free yourself. The work you do on yourself will also naturally and automatically free others, although you're not likely to be aware of that. It is not only your prayers, intentions, and actions to help others that make a difference in the world. More important are your efforts to raise your own consciousness and free yourself from the limitations and negativity of your own mind. Be selfish in this regard, because there is no such thing as being selfish when you're doing something to free yourself from what is truly selfish, the ego. 
Freeing yourself from your own ego is the most important work you will ever do with the most far-reaching consequences. People too often argue that spirituality is not practical, that it has little or no impact on the problems in the world. And perhaps some of the things people do in the name of spirituality don't have much of an impact. But I can guarantee that meditation and other practices that raise your consciousness also affect humanity's consciousness as a whole. And this is the only way that humanity's consciousness is raised, one person at a time. It's fine if you're moved to work to improve the environment or other conditions on this planet. That is excellent and in line with many people's life purpose. But it's also fine if you're not drawn to doing these things, but drawn instead to spiritual practices and a lifestyle that is not very involved with the world. One of the main ways that things are changing and will change in this world is by people turning within, discovering who they really are, seeing through the lies in the egoic mind, and then acting accordingly in their lives, in small and larger ways. What good is it if your actions are not informed by your true self, but by your ego's fear, judgment, hatred, guilt, or anger? How can such ill-informed actions transform humanity at the core, which is what is needed? You already know what a world of the ego's creation looks like. You have to create the world anew by becoming new within yourself, each and every one of you. If I thought there was any other way to accomplish that, I would be teaching that but I am teaching you what you need to know to transform your consciousness, to bring Christ consciousness to this world. That is what my teachings are about and why I'm bringing them to you now at this point in history. Humanity needs to be transformed from the inside out, and it won't be transformed any other way. Clearing out the lies, mistaken beliefs, Negative feelings and confusion from your own body-mind will make it a clear vehicle for not only truth with a capital T, but also for your own personal truth regarding how to live your life. Once you've become clear on the inside, your actions will become clear, clean, decisive, and helpful to all of humanity. Without that inner clarity, Humanity is like a dirty engine that doesn't function smoothly or properly and may even break down. Become clear and clean inside within yourself, and then humanity's mind will also become that much clearer and cleaner. Please share these insights with others. Humanity can be and is fixed, so to speak, from the inside out by seeing the falseness of the egoic mind, the voice in your head, and by discovering the truth that will set you free. I am here to deliver this truth, which is the universal truth, what has always been true and will always be true. That truth is based in love. It is this truth that will save humanity. Do this emotional and spiritual work not only for yourself but for everyone. Thank you for being open to this message. I am with you always.